get into it. Uh, so social media one on one. This presentation, it was actually quite hard to pull together in that the tourism team do this a fair bit, but for our tourism partners, but we identify where they're lacking. Um, so and then we target specific groups of them. Being such a broad um, audience, I suppose, I know there's only a few of you on here at the moment. Um, but going out to a broad audience um, it was quite hard to, to whittle it down um, for everything social media. So I've tried to reflect back on what we do and how we use it and how you guys can use it as well. Um, I just wanted to end with some tips as well um, and then some local examples. So just the agenda for the presentation. So we'll have social media history and usage. Why to use it, um, some of the lingo and dispelling the myths with um, some of the some of the lingo that's out there and how important it is. Which platform do I use? Um, our tips, some local examples of some businesses doing it well, um, and some questions. Um, I'll open it up to questions then at the end. We only had one question pre-submitted, which was which platform do I use? So we'll address that um, a bit later. All right, so getting into it. So a basic definition of social media, right? So we're starting from, you know, what what is social media to, you know, we could go as far as um, targeted advertising on it. Um, websites and applications that enable us um, users to create and share content or to participate uh, in social networking. So the important parts of that are create and sharing content and engaging in social networking. So the social networking part is, is a bit that businesses um, often forget about. Um, it's social media is all about that interaction with people. So you need to remember that um, it's a it's half of the beast is is reaching out, is talking to people, is replying to customers, um, as well as sharing content. Um, so if you can focus on both of those things, um, you'll do well. Um, I pulled this one from a uh, this quote from a presentation that Michaela did to our tourism partners on um, Facebook for beginners, a bit of a comparison to um, traditional marketing. So like a one way SOS radio, traditional marketing meant broadcasting your message to as many people as you could afford to reach over blanket networks like radio and television. Then came the sitting, waiting and hoping, hoping that the search party on the other side, the consumer, picked up what you had been broadcasting, hoping that it had influenced them enough to buy what you were selling. So I suppose from that quote, some of the key points there, um, that it was a one-way communication, those traditional forms of marketing, whereas um, social media and um, some of the platforms definitely are not that. Um, it's one of their key benefits. Um, so reaching as many people as you could afford to, um, that's no longer the case with social media. It's, it is a free service. And if you do pay to play, it is inexpensive compared to some other traditional forms of um, marketing. Um, the blanket networks as well. So were your target audience on those networks? Um, do they read that newspaper? Do they watch this television show? Um, also, what does a circulation of 200,000 mean for my small three inch ad? Um, they're things that you need to consider. Um, and hoping that it influenced, so right down at the end there saying that, hoping that it influenced them enough to buy what you were selling. I suppose one of the benefits of social media is that you can see straight away if it's having an impact um, through engagements, um, yeah, through likes, through comments, and you can see what's not working as well. Um, and then you can even go as far as installing uh, things like Facebook pixels to track people from Facebook to your website all the way through to purchasing. Um, so you have that full customer journey there. So I just thought it was a, a, a nice quote. I like when Michaela put it up last time and, and got me thinking, I thought it's an important one to, to go back to just in a um, comparison to traditional marketing when we're looking at social media. Um, just a brief history of social media. I don't know um, who of you had any of these platforms back in the day. Um, I know, I. Back at uni, I refused to do a MySpace page. I was like, nah, this is stupid. It won't go anywhere. <laughs> um, a year later, I started a Facebook page. So that was that was well done. Um, but yeah, you can see here from when they were established to sort of where, where we're at today or at the end of 2017. I just added a couple more in there. Um, so in 2009, WhatsApp was launched as well. It's one of the big players now. It's a chat service. Um, 
and then a couple of other things. So in 2012, Facebook, which is the biggest social media platform, it reached uh, 1 billion um, global active users um, and has gone on to just remain the dominant force in social media. Um, 2016 was interesting. Um, recently acquired um, by Facebook was Instagram. Um, and then they started um, taking on the other platforms. So uh, Instagram went with direct uh, competition with Snapchat by releasing different features like stories um, and really tried to wrestle away Snapchat's um, rise, which was pretty, um, pretty quick at that time. Um, and it's sort of leveled it out now, um, which was interesting. Well, interesting for marketing people like me. Um, Vine in 2012, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this, but it was a, a video um, platform, so short videos. Um, it actually was um, was stopped in 2016. It just wasn't getting the traction anymore. Um, come 2017 and TikTok gets on the scene, same sort of thing, um, short videos, some really unique features to it. Um, it's now knocking down the door of one of our top 10 social media platforms in Australia. Yeah, so there you go. So by 2020, TikTok had 1.5 billion downloads in the App Store. So it's um, it's the fastest growing social media platform right now. Um, just Australian usage. So you can see there, as I mentioned, Facebook is still the dominant force. Um, 16 million monthly active Australian users. 40% um, of the population have an account um, and, and are active on it. So it's um, it makes sense to be on there. Um, YouTube, which wasn't on the previous slide, but it was sort of deemed as a, a, a social media platform when they started introducing your own profile, where you can upload your own videos, get followers, um, all the things that you can do on social media. Um, so it's a pretty big player now. Um, and Instagram, again, uh, number three there. Um, Facebook and Instagram are going to be the ones we focus on a bit in this because it's our core platforms um, and probably the ones that you guys are most familiar with. Um, I know you all already have Facebook accounts. Um, I didn't get time to check Instagram, so um, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting to see the, um, the different usage in Australia and just, um, yeah, 40% of the population having a Facebook account. It sort of makes sense to be on there. All right, so why use it? So I wanted to, um, we thought it's pretty important to show the difference between personal use of, of social media and, and use for business. Um, so we'll start with like personal use for the moment. So why, why do we use it personally? So everyone else does. We, we are, um, we're followers in that if it's popular, we'll, we'll jump on board and, and do it ourselves. Um, to keep in touch with friends and family, to share pictures and videos or thought provoking news articles to show off, people are on social media to show off. So their latest holiday or their latest purchase, whatever it may be. To tag friends and funny memes, because you're addicted to it. So more and more studies are coming out that people are addicted to social media. Um, on average, we're picking up our phones, our mobile phones every 12 minutes. We're most likely to go into a, a social media app when we pick it up. Um, now looking at business. So like I said, Australians, um, are using social media more and more. They spend on average an hour and 39 minutes on a social media platform every day. Um, so the old adage of going fishing where the fish are, so it's where the eyeballs are. Um, it's free or inexpensive marketing tool. Um, you can spend all the money um, you want on it or you can be organic and create content yourself. Um, if you do pay to play, like I said, it's um, quite inexpensive. Um, you're likely to see a 40% um, further reach for your for your posts if you do um, if you do advertise, um, but it's not saying that you have to. Um, you can reach new and highly targeted potential customers. Um, this is uh, even more so when you do um, do advertise through social media. You can really target your core audience or who you want to attract um, and. Facebook and considering that they own WhatsApp and Instagram, um, their, their reach and their um, data to be able to target people is, um, is pretty powerful. Um, you can engage with potential customers and create a real human connection to your business. 
So that two-way conversation can really break down some barriers to people maybe wanting to purchase your product or engage your services. Um, so if you can humanize your business a bit more, it, it really helps forge that connection with a potential customer. Um, and social media allows you to do that. Um, it increases uh, traffic to your own website. So a lot of you have spent probably a lot of time or, or paid a lot of money to have a website built for you, but then it's about driving traffic to that website. Like how do you get it? Um, social media is a great way to, to drive traffic to your own um, marketing platforms like your website. Um, and finally your marketing efforts are measurable. So the analytics that, um, that these platforms provide uh, a great way to see if what you're what you're sending out to the masses is actually working, um, particularly in engagements. Um, and then, like I said, going further down the track of Facebook pixels and, and really tracking uh, anyone that uh, may go through to purchase. And you can then build a picture of your your customer um, from them seeing a post on social media right through to purchasing. So I just wanted to reiterate that just the importance you need to keep if you're going to be if your business is going to be on social media you need to keep the personal um, and your business profile separate. Uh, you see a lot of businesses um, posting material that that is more relevant to a personal page. Um, there's definitely scope to to have a tone of voice and to to humanize your brand in a sense, but it's, you need to be mindful that a potential customer might not like to celebrate your child's birthday, for instance, or, um, but keeping it humanized definitely. And, you know, a core showing your core values is, is important through the platforms, but just keep in mind that you should keep the personal stuff personal. Probably a way um, to define that like we were talking about with like traditional marketing and just a comparison is you have a brick and mortar business and you have a brick and mortar house and they're two separate things in your life. So the same as social media, you can have a personal profile and you can have a business profile, but you do two different things in those two different platforms, uh, pages. All right. I'm just going to move on to a bit of the lingo that I may use moving forward and that I probably already use that you might not be familiar with. Um, and I also wanted to just dispel some myths about what is important and what's not. Um, I'll put my own scale of importance on what, what we look at um, when we're looking at our analytics. Um, and I think it may uh, be different to what some of you may think um, are the important factors. So likes, so a user can express that they like a piece of content. So you, this, most people would be familiar with this. It's the, um, the go-to reaction on, on say Facebook and, um, and Instagram. Um, the importance I've put that it's six out of 10. Um, it's important in the fact that um, likes on, especially on Facebook, really help promote uh, your, your content in the Facebook algorithm. Um, if you're, if a friend of yours, say, or a follower to your Facebook business page likes a piece of your content, there's 20% chance that their friends will then see that same post um, and so on and so on. So it's, it is important um, to get the reach up um, and potential for engagements, um, but it's not the be all and end all. Likes and follow. So another likes. So on Facebook, we've got, um, you can like content and you can also like uh, a page. Um, you can also follow a page and on Instagram, you can follow a page. So it can get confusing. Um, so on Facebook, a follower is a user who identifies strongly with your offering and has opted to follow all content shared by your page. So they will see your content posted when it is posted. Um, a page liker, may not necessarily see what you post. It's all up to Facebook to, to dictate what they will see. Um, often the numbers are about the same. We're about a thousand off um, page likes versus page followers. Um, but again, this is another metric that 
that a lot of people get caught up in that you need this huge following to have any sort of influence on on your audience it's um and this was prevalent a few years ago when when companies were selling followers or selling page likes um but it was found out pretty quickly that that doesn't doesn't really help anyone because um these bots or, or fake followers aren't engaged with what you're doing um so it's better off to say have 100 page likes with 50 percent of them engaged as opposed to 20,000 with only 100 people say engaged so it's um it's pretty important to bring that back that sure you need an audience to speak to um but it's not the be all and end all So Reach, um, the number of unique users that were shown content from your platform. Um, this is an easy one for, for um, users to get their head around on, on Facebook and Instagram. It's one of the first things you see um, in both their analytics. And it sort of combines um, your engagements um, and your shares um, and shows you what has happened um, after that. So like I said, if someone likes your post, it's 20% chance that their friends will see that post and then like it um, it's it's funny how it works sometimes the algorithm we were only chatting this morning um, Michaela had a had an example of one that that has one of our pieces of content that has tremendous reach but not many likes on it um, but it has more shares and, and more comments um, so it's funny how it how they do it how it works out to reach but it's an important one in that you can see that it's resonating with an audience um, and it's an easy one to see straight up so pretty important um, yeah reach. that one is really good because it actually tells you exactly how many times it was shown on a news feed of a person so to be comparative with our traditional marketing um, you can put an ad in a newspaper but you don't know how many people saw that ad so this literally tells you, as an example, how many people open that newspaper and physically read your ad. This is telling you the exact number of how many people are physically seeing your ad or just simply your post on Facebook. Michaela, can I just jump in there though? Is that like, um, it's in there, but if I'm scrolling through just a do, 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 it won't mean they necessarily read it. Yeah, so that's right. It, so it appears in their feed. That's but right. We, we don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So whereas, yeah. whereas a like would show that they've actually actively engaged with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So um, there's reach, which is when your contact is shown to unique users. So how many people saw it? And then there's impressions. So often you'll see the same piece of content two or three times. And that's what impressions is. So we more look at reach like unique users um, that have seen it. They, like you said, Megan, they might not have engaged with it, but it's good to see. It's a reflection of how well the content is doing because it combines your engagements um, together and and is working with Facebook algorithm to get it further. So engagements, what we were just talking about then. So this is the number of reactions, including likes, comments, shares, saves, post clicks, um, and other link clicks. Um, so this one's pretty important. So this is when you truly know that your content is um, is resonating with your audience, is if they're liking it, is if they're commenting. Um, sure, you might get a negative comment, but that also works in your favour in the sense of, um, of reach um, and engagement rate. Um, so engagements are, are pretty important um, and they work towards the next um, the next term, which is engagement rate which we put the most importance on. So that's a metric that measures the level of engagement that a piece of created content is receiving from an audience and represented as a percentage. So I've got the, how we come up with it down there. Um, I'll remember I'm sending this through so you don't need to jot it down or anything. Um, but this is the one that we place pretty high importance on. Um, so it really shows how much a percentage of our audience are engaging with the content we're producing. Um, and we've audited our, all of our content to, and we know now what works. Um, we can pull that out when we, when we need a big hitter. 
Um, and if you can start doing that for yourselves, knowing what works and potentially what doesn't, um, but once you get to that stage, it's, it's really liberating on, on social media to know what's going to work and what's not. And, and you find it easier to pull content together. Um, that does involve a lot of testing. Um, and so, but social media is a great way to test things out. Um, I've, I know when I first started um, with tourism, I would, I would find a really nice image or a really nice video and go, oh, this is going to do great. And you put it up and it just flops and you're like, how, did, how does that work? And you realize that you're dealing with like an audience that is very different to you or um, might not think the same thing looks cool or, or whatever it may be. But you start to get an understanding if when you do it long enough and you post enough content, you start to get a feel for what works. And, um, and like I said, once you realize that, it's um, quite liberating then because you um, can really work the system a bit, I suppose. So they're just a few of the terms that we um, that I may touch on here. Um, but again, there's you could go down um, the rabbit hole there with some of the terms um, that we uh, that we go to. But they're the most important ones for us, I think. Um, I just might throw it out now. Are there any questions that you guys might have from where we're at now? All good. Great. So which platform? Um, I thought I would start with showing you our core platforms, which I mentioned are Facebook and Instagram. Um, we started our Facebook page back in 2011. This was the, under the Great Lakes Tourism. Um, we amassed a following of about 40,000 um, over the next six years. Um, then became amalgamation and we, um, we negotiated with Facebook to merge our, our previous pages together. So Barrington Tops Tourism, which, which Thomas looked after, had a massive following as well, really highly engaged audience. Um, and Facebook allowed us to merge the pages together to Barrington Coast. Um, and I suppose this is a bit for us to show off what we do as well, this slide. So last year, our content was shown um, 9.8 million times. So that's impressions again. So that's how many times the piece of content is shown. Um, and our content generated 600,000 reactions. So you can say that about 30 to 40% of those were comments that we also replied to. That's a, that's a lot of comments uh, to reply to and the team do well to, to get back to everyone. And on average in 2019, our content was shown to 15,000 people per day on Facebook. So we post every day um, and every day on average 15,000 people were seeing it. So you can see um, the sort of impact it has um, to be consistent. Can I ask Ben, is it is sure. it difficult to just stick to one post a day when you have so much content? Like is that, do you, it, do you post more often than once a day or? Yeah, it can be. It, we've. I, I think we're getting to the stage now where we could probably post more, um, depending on the platform. Facebook, yes. Um, and when we've got um, some more tools at our disposal, like our destination website, um, I think we will post more. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, look, it's, it's a tricky one. We've always gone on the, on the thing of one per day, but when, when there's more information that needs to be shared or if there's really engaging content that is timely, we'll get it up as soon as mm -hmm. we can, no matter if we've posted half an hour before, um, okay. cause we know it'll do well. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's not, there's no, um, set rule on how often you should post. I've, um, I've done a bit of a um, backflip on what I used to think. In these um, sessions before, I would say to businesses, you are running your own business, you've got more important things to do. If you can get one post out a week, great. Um, whereas now I've changed a bit and I, I think it's more important to be consistently posting. Um, and if you, it's my feeling that if you can't promote your business, some form of your business on social media, enough to do one post a day, then really do you have something that you re you can really sell? I, I think people that are invested in their business can find something to post, content to post daily, um, even if that's reusing old content. That's, that's my feeling. But like I said, I've done a bit of a backflip on that. I used to say just post when you can and post um, engaging content, whereas now I'm like, 
probably post more if you can. Um, consistency is key. Yeah. It's consistency above all else. So um, Facebook loves you using its platform. That's its business is it wants you to get on there and use it. So the more you use it, the further your content will go as well, the more people will see it. Um, so yeah, consistency is key. So if you post twice a week, every Tuesday and Thursday, then stick to that. If you post once a day, stick to that. If we suddenly dropped off and started posting every third day, our, our reach would not go as far. Um, if we started doing three times a day, it would take a while for Facebook to realize that that's our new consistency as well. So if we're gonna change that plan, then we need to be prepared for that and you know, know it's gonna take some time for Facebook to go, oh, I like this, <laughs> keep going. Yeah, thanks for Carla, it's a good point. Um, so yeah, there's no, there's no rule on it, but I would say post more, post as much as you can, to be honest. Um, so again, our platforms are Instagram platform. Again, some pretty big numbers for us. Um, we started this page in 2014. Uh, it's taken a bit more uh, learning from us on what works and what doesn't on Instagram, but now we've got a good feel for it. Um, and, and yeah, we're getting um, our engagement rate, uh, which I've touched on before, 3.6%, puts us into the influencer type um, field. So, you know, you might have heard the term social media influencer and those that get paid to go out and literally take photos or videos and upload them to social media in sponsored posts. Um, if you're looking to engage a social media influencer, you would want above 3% engagement rate. Um, so considering the audience we have of 21,000, to have 3.6% engagement rate over the year is, is very solid. Um, and, and the most on compared when you compare us to our competitors. Um, we're also the most followed and engaged with regional tourism Instagram account in New South Wales. So that's enough gloating. Um, Basically what we use each of the platforms for. So I just thought it was um, interesting again to break it down and you can apply this to your own business as well. You don't necessarily have to, but um, Facebook, we use longer form copy. Um, so that's basically post some more wordy. We, um, the both platforms have the ability to see more copy. Um, before you need to click that see more button, there will be um, up to four, or five lines of Facebook um, copy there on Instagram, it's one and a half lines. So you can really engage people um, with your copy on Facebook a lot more. Instagram, you need to do it with the picture and then hopefully they click see more. Um, so that's what we use Facebook for, a bit more of our longer form copy. Um, to drive traffic to our destination website or third party sites, um, Facebook is, is so much better for that. It's, it's link friendly. Um, we use Facebook for event promotion as well. Uh, we keep events separate uh, on our Facebook account because it's got a great event um, feature on there as well um, where you can schedule events and um, even add other promoters events um, and video sharing. So while we share videos on Instagram as well, uh, videos on Facebook just have a tremendous reach and um, normally uh, get a lot more engagements than they do on Instagram. So we tend to share a lot more videos on Facebook. Um, on Instagram, it's all about sharing highly inspiring visual content. It's a photo sharing platform. You, it, that's what it is at its core. So you need to keep that in mind that it needs to be highly inspiring visual content if you're gonna share on Instagram, especially for us. Um, we use it for its engagement encouraging features in stories so there's things that um really encourage your audience to uh to take another action so whether it be a poll um a question if they want to ask a question about um the region uh, even quizzes um or to to send you a direct message as well there's some features that are in instagram and there's and there's new ones being added all the time um we can engage with visitors via hashtag searches and geotag searches as well. Um, might be, it's sometimes termed like Facebook or Instagram stalking, but basically you can search via a hashtag. So say via a hashtag foster, and you can see all the content that is um, uploaded with that hashtag. 
um, and we can then like photos, comment on the photo. Um, we can even ask to, to potentially share that photo and find user generated content. And same goes for the geotags. Um, it's a little bit harder to do that on Facebook um, unless an, an individual tags you in it. Um, and finally, just we advertise on all the platforms in some form. We don't spend much, but um, we're finding that advertising via the stories platform on Instagram has the biggest bang for buck at the moment. Um, it's, stories has such a high viewership um, and it's just increasing that more brands are jumping on and advertising through, through that um, feature. Um, and we tested it out uh, end of last year and we found that we were getting incredible reach and, and click-throughs to our website. So it's something we're going to continue doing. With that, I guess probably touching on um, some people get scared off by the whole advertising or I have to pay money um, sort of aspect of social media. Um, we only boost posts that are already doing well. We don't waste our money trying to push something that isn't already engaging our followers because if it's not already doing it organically, putting money behind it isn't jazzing it up. It's just pushing it further to people that aren't going to engage with it. So uh, don't feel like you need to go out and put money behind every single post because um, some people do and they freak out and think that <laughs> that's, that's going to get them the most engagement. If you've got a cracker post that's done really well already, put some money behind it and see how far it goes. But that's the only time we boost posts is when it's already doing well because it's proven. Yeah, it's a really good point. And, and like I said before, when, once you've posted and tested a bit, you know what will work. So you can then start um, uh, boosting posts at earlier stages. So, cause you know it will work. Um, but yeah, it's a really good point to just push what is working with your audience because it'll no doubt work with, um, with an extended audience then. Um, yeah, things that flop will flop even if you put money behind it. Um, so look, just for your businesses and, and um, you can take some of the points out of what we use them for, but I thought this was important to put in. So um, for Facebook, some of the pros, the potential for reach, so for your content to, to reach further is more than say on Instagram. Um, that's based on the algorithm, um, the, the engagement sending your, your content further. Um, the familiarity with the site itself, like I said, 40% of Australians have a Facebook account. They're familiar with it. Um, they're used to seeing businesses um, either promote or post on there. Um, so that's a, that's a pro for it. Um, it's link friendly. So you can, I said this before, but you can drive users off Facebook into your own um, marketing channels like your website. Um, you can post links in comments. You can um, put them in uh, your, your post itself. You can even have a, a picture that is a link as well. So it's, um, it's one of the benefits of Facebook that you can drive people off the platform. Um, it's good for short and long form content, as I mentioned, um, especially copy. Um, and the ability for content to be shared, there's a share button on Facebook, which just makes it a whole lot easier. There's, there's no such thing on, on Instagram or there is to stories, but um, not with the ease there is of on Facebook. So, and it's a really um, important tool to get your, um, your message or your content further um, and increase engagements and reach. Um, some of the cons, um, just the algorithm change that happened a couple of years ago. So Facebook tried to um, limit businesses impact on the platform um, by stopping the reach of, um, of business pages and tried to bring it more back to what it was cr first created for, which was a social media platform for people to interact, not businesses to promote. Um, it, it won't have too much of an effect on, on local businesses. Um, it's just something to be mindful of that the numbers, so our, our amassed audience and our engagements um, back in 2016 was, was massive compared to what it is now. But if you can still create um, engaging content, it's not gonna have an effect on you. So um, it's a good thing to keep in mind. And just the trust with the platform. So that was brought up uh, last year or the year before, just with some of the data leaks. Um, a lot of people switched off their Facebook account um, or turned off a lot of settings on their account. Um, 
and it's not going to have too much of an issue for a business if you know who you're targeting um, and stuff. And a lot of those people that did switch off have since come back. Um, but it just is something to consider. Um, Instagrams, um, like I said before, it needs to be visually inspiring content. We're lucky that we've got that type of content to showcase um, as a destination. Um, but it's not to say that your business can't find the same content. I'll, I'll show some examples later of, of some that are doing it well. Um, so the usage is increasing on Instagram, especially with its new features, like I said, stories. Um, so it's on the way up, it's about to plateau, but um, Instagram is still on the way up. Um, brand engagement, so people are more likely to engage with a brand on Instagram than they are on Facebook. Um, Facebook, you feel like you're getting it shoved down your throat a bit. Um, with businesses and, and advertised posts. Um, people on Instagram see a nice image and they follow a brand and because they want to see more of those images. Um, so yeah, and then they're more likely as well. I wrote down a stat earlier, where is it? So 90% of followers on Instagram follow at least one brand or business. That's just one brand. And 83% discover new products or services via the platform. So. Um, People do their research on there and also purchase um, through Instagram. Uh, the engagement tools I mentioned before through stories uh, are, are very handy. So you can uh, encourage people to, to take a further action. Um, and geotags and hashtags, as I mentioned before, being able to search these, um, both these tags. Um, you can also follow hashtags as well. Um, so you can see if your product's being used. Um, yeah, that's another uh, very important part of Instagram. What's the difference between a geotag and a hashtag then? Yeah, so a geotag is when a user uploads a, um, say an image to Instagram and they tag, uh, it says, uh, where was this taken? Or add, add your location, I think it says. Um, so you click on there and you say it was Foster or Foster Main Beach, or you can get pretty specific on where it was. Um, you can then search that in the search field on Instagram under places um, and you can see all the content that was uploaded from that location. Um, hashtags on the other and they're a single word with no, um, with no spaces in between with the, um, with the pound sign or the hashtag sign in front of it. Um, these are also indexed so you can search them um, and you can actually follow hashtags as well. So geotags from a tourist perspective is probably a really powerful tag sort of to use as well like if you're stand up paddleboard or you're you know mm. uh hiking or something like that that you yep. can say this is this is a fun time where we're having out here doing these things yeah totally oh, okay I, i've not heard of them before yeah it's something that we we monitor the geo tags so we've got a there's about 60 that we monitor mm -hmm. whereas hashtags we monitor about six um ah. but the geo tags are ones that we constantly monitor for user generated content um and it's a great way to find because we're not always tagged in these images so we have to find them somehow and this is a, a great way for us to find images right across the region so mm. you can type in stroud you can type in moorland you can type in and it'll have a geo tag and show mm. you the latest images that have been uploaded there so it's a pretty important tool and it's um, a great way for small local businesses to get out there as well and get to their audience if you're a business in stroud tell people you're there, show them how amazing you are, show your neighbors by tagging yourself in that location. And mm. if you know your neighbors are looking at that location or searching, um, it also helps with your SEO. So it can um, help in the background further along when people are Googling your business. If you're mm. constantly uploading content that you've placed a location on, if people are looking for businesses in Stroud, you can come up in Google from doing that consistently. Yeah, wow, great. Yeah, it's a thanks for bringing that up too, Michaela. I um I forgot to mention it, but yeah, posts with geo tags and hashtags um go further as well on both platforms. So if you can tag your location in every shot, even if your business doesn't change where it is, if you've got an office, tag tag where it is in every post because it just means it goes that little bit further. Um, so cons, um, Instagram isn't very link friendly, so you can have a link in your profile. Um, which is great, still drives traffic to your website, but in your posts themselves, um, you can include a link, but it's not clickable. Um, same goes for in comments as well. So if you're trying to drive people off the site, it, it can be a bit trickier. 
um, which is why you see a lot of posts saying um, link in profile. So you have to do another step to go back and find the link. Um, so the lack of reach and shareability. Um, look, I just put this in in comparison to Facebook, really. Um, we've still got tremendous reach on, um, on Instagram, but it doesn't have the same um, algorithm in that if, if Megan, you like one of my posts and then one of your friends sees it, um, for you to like one of my posts on Instagram, you need to follow me. Um, if you like it, it's not gonna show your friends that don't follow me. Um, where on Facebook, it will. Um, so you can still have tremendous reach on the platform. Um, it's just a little bit harder to do. So you can be found in the explore page. Um, and if your content is shared by someone else, but as I said there, shareability is a bit of a, um, a bit harder to do on Instagram too. It takes a couple of steps to, to share content. Um, so yeah, but it's not to say it doesn't happen. Yeah. And it's almost like a hidden pro because it's more targeted. So Facebook is sort of sharing it to then your uh, group of friends, which usually you have the same interests as your friends, but it's more of a blanket when it's getting shared. So for Instagram, they're keeping it targeted. They're going to show you the content if you are interested and you've already proven that. So that's almost um, a hidden pro. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Michaela. Um, I'm just going to go into some of our tips that we've come up with. Um, and this, this applies to us and, and to all businesses that are thinking about using social media. Um, and they're things to, to keep in mind if, you, if you're going to start up a platform. I know you've all got a Facebook page at the moment, but it's something to consider. Um, so our key tips, um, consistency is key. As Michaela mentioned before, you have to be consistent on there. Um, the next point, sort of aligns with that as well to, of not going dark. Um, so if you're posting consistently, if uh, a user jumps onto your page and sees that you posted yesterday, they know that you're open or that you're still trading or that, um, or that you're, you're using the platform and they're more likely to engage with you. Um, on the flip side, if you've set up a page and then never um, added anything to it since 2014, um, people are going to assume you're closed. They won't go, they won't do the next thing and, and Google your website or, or call you or, or anything. They'll just go to the next best offer and find something that is open. So if you're going to set up a page, be sure to be consistent with it, with your posting. Um, and on the flip side, if you have set up a page and you're not um, consistently posting, then you can switch it off as well. There's no harm in switching it off. It's probably better for you to deactivate the page or, or hide the page from public viewing than to have one sitting there dormant. Um, keep personal personal. So I mentioned this before, if you can keep your personal stuff off your business page, um, that's great. Um, I would recommend that. Content is king, but it does not need to be polished. So obviously you don't want to upload blurry photos or shaky videos or something like that, but don't, don't look at other people's feeds and, and think that it's highly curated and that it's, um, that it's done by a professional. A lot of it is done on mobile phones. We've all got great cameras in our phones. Um, and even our content, a lot of people were like, oh, you just pay photographers to go out and get that stuff. And it's like, well, we don't. It's 90% of our content is user generated. The other 5% might be photographers. The other 5% we've taken. Um, on our phones. So um, please remember that it doesn't have to be the schmickest looking video or, um, or the best shot. Um, if there's content up there that's gonna resonate with your audience, they're not gonna mind if it's a tiny bit shaky or if your voice is in the background or, of a video or something like that. Um, that's good to know because I'm always second guessing. Oh, I don't know if I should put that. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's something like even we do as well. And we, we do it every day. We overthink it a bit. Yes. Like as if content is going to work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you really overthink it. But um, I think you start to, it's a, it's a great way to test. Remember that when you put things on Facebook or, or on Instagram, that the content is there for only a short amount of time in the people's um sort of awareness of it. So it will be gone. So it, if people flick past it or if they like it and they move on or they may engage with your brand. So a piece of dud 
um, content isn't isn't the death knell to your Facebook page or anything like that. You can just you can learn from that and then put up something that's a bit bit sharper or or anything. But yeah, just try not to overthink it too much. Mm. Um, I think that brings up just on the point. Sorry, just on the point about personal personal content. Mm. If if part of that content is part of your story, so if if Jade, if your customers are going to be seeing your red kelpie as part as part of their transaction with you, well, then that red kelpie becomes part of your business story, and you feel fine to, to have photographs of your puppy growing up and wandering through your business and engaging with your customers because that's really nice stuff that you should post on your business page. It's kind of personal but kind of business. Okay, that's good to know. Actually, I'll do a post about yeah. that. And it's relatability, so it's keeping your business human and you know approachable yeah. as well. If you're yeah. too refined and too out of reach for your average customer, then it it you know it they're not going to just pick up on the phone and go oh they're really friendly. So um, yeah, that brings the relatability to it and the human human side to it as well. Um, and uh, I had another point and I can't remember. So, oh, thanks guys. That's good. Next post. <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, uh, respond. You need to respond to everything. It's, it's in your best interest to respond to negative comments, to positive, to, to even just emojis. Respond with another emoji. Um, it, it indexes your content and sends it further. If it can see, if Facebook can see that you're active on it. Um, some of those algorithm changes that they made in the past, it, um, it will make them null and void if they can see that you're engaging and generating um, conversation with your audience. Um, it really helps you. So. Um, Can I say you guys do that amazingly well? I really enjoy reading your responses back to comments on the Barrington Coast page and Insta. Uh, thing. So it's a really lovely dynamic that happens. So yeah, you do a really yeah, good we, job with that. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank we you. um we do spend a lot of time responding to comments. There's some posts that we get, you know, over a thousand comments um, on them. Um, so it does take some time to do, but it is it is very important to do as well. You can really forge yeah. a connection with people. And the longer yeah. you wait between them reaching out to you and you responding, um, the, the harder you're going to find to forge that connection with them. So if you can be timely with it as well, it's, um, it just works um, so well in your favour and really um, humanises your business too. You don't have to be so, um, so formal in your responses to them. You would have seen on our page, Megan, we're, we're quite jokey with people as well. It's about being social and stuff and, and humanising the brand a bit. Yeah, and that's the big difference with social media is that two-way connection. Mm. Um, people are yeah. going to ask you questions about your business on a comment on a post. Um, uh, they're going to inbox you. So people see it just as important as leaving a voice message on your phone or sending you an email. People view it just as importantly. So um, it's really crucial to reply to that timely. Um. I put in here about being efficient with if you are going to go down the um, path of social media to, to try and make it as efficient for yourself as possible. So there are tools, say, on Facebook where you can schedule your posts. So you could set yourself one hour during the week to, to schedule all your posts for the week. Um, and there's also third party tools where you can do it on Instagram as well. Alternatively, you can, you can um, draft posts and keep them in your drafts and simply log on and hit post um, when you're ready to go. Um, Another, another way to be efficient is, um, is to use Instagram as your, your main source because it's connected, it can be connected to your Facebook page. You can save a lot of time by posting to Instagram and opting to repost the content on your Facebook page. Um, some of the links, so if you at someone might be different when it comes to Facebook, but you can simply edit those if you want. Um, on the Facebook platform, but it just saves a whole heap of time. Instead of posting on two um, platforms and, and, and that taking up more time, just post on one platform and share it to both. Um, use hashtags and geotags where you can. This is a little plug. I think you guys have all signed up for next week's workshop, which is um, solely on hashtags. So we'll cover that a bit more then. But like I said before, content with hashtags and geotags um, have further reach. So it's always um, recommended that you include those. Be social, so social media, follow other business pages, follow people, chat with people, chat with other businesses, try and engage, try and encourage people to, to get in a conversation with you. 
So like we, we often do that with posts on ours. We will go back and have a look and say, oh, did you end up visiting this weekend? Or um, did you, how'd you go? Did you find it, like this location? Um, to try and generate that conversation. So um, be social, like we keep saying, it humanizes your business a bit, um, shows a genuine interest. Um, you can monitor, you should be monitoring your analytics. Um, so again, what works, what doesn't. Um, so you can avoid making the mistakes of um, any posts that do flop um, and re reusing those um, or reusing the ones that do work. Um, we get caught up in, in not showing the same thing, but you need to sometimes remember that you won't, uh, your content won't be shown to all of your followers all of the time. So reposting content that worked before um, is is an important thing to do because you can um you can reach a completely new audience some people might have might see it again but that's great you're just reinforcing the message so um look there are key tips um for if you're going down the the social media um uh, route which we which we recommend you do um I just wanted to show you, um, sorry, were there any questions on, on that before we move on to some local examples? No, all good? Okay. So some local examples, these are just ones that I, um, I've seen and I think they do a really good job for, for different um, reasons um, and they're sort of varied in, in their offer as well. So Drifter Camping and Four Wheel Drive, they're based out at Gloucester. Um, what I like about these guys, first of all, they're consistent in their posting. They post one to two times a day um, on both platforms. Um, the language and the tone of voice speaks directly to their core consumer. So I, I follow these guys anyway, and, and I often, they upload a lot of videos as well. And Luke, the founder, um, he voices and, and is the main um, talent in most of the videos. Um, when you read, the um the post caption you can actually hear luke talking so this is where it humanizes it a bit his tone of voice comes across in his his content copy um so even the 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 spelling mistakes and the you know you can see that one there doesn't have a um capital letter to start off with like trim the trailer up a bit like you can actually hear him saying it um and it just humanizes his brand even more and it speaks directly to his core consumer which is which is really cool um, their responsiveness they get a lot of engagement on their page and he was like us he responds to every single one of them sometimes very um with heaps of information on what they can do um he's adaptable as well so during this coronavirus um uh, lockdown they're obviously in camping and four-wheel driving that was a no-go so they um quickly realized that people were camping in their backyard so they started camping in their backyard showing off their products in their own backyard um, so they they were quick to adapt, um, and again, he's efficient use of Facebook own platform. So he posts directly to Instagram and shares it to Facebook, and then he updates some of the links um, on Facebook. So he's not double handling. He is in a sense, but not as much as you would if you were doing them individually. Um, so I just think it's a, a great example of a business doing well. Um, Gloucester Laundromat. Um, this is a bit to do with Michaela having a one-on-one -on -one with him, I reckon. But um, look, they're consistent again. Um, now you might think, why would a why would a laundromat have a um, Instagram page? What are they going to show? Like, what visually inspiring content can they show? But they're funny. They they're informative about what they can offer. Um, they really play on the let us do it. Don't don't burden yourself with this stuff. And a lot of their content is amusing as well. Um, it's it's adaptive as well. So during the water crisis, they were all about, hey, we need to save water. Let us help save the town water like so come and wash with us we use this this and this and um i thought that was very clever um they're a niche service in gloucester as well as uh, thomas i don't know if there's another laundromat or not if they're the only one but i think they're the only one on social media um yeah they're the only one and they, they're the only one who does social media well in, in the main street pretty much yeah and yeah they're just very consistent in what they do and um and yeah i think they do a really good job of it considering they're a laundromat on a photo sharing platform. I think they um, punch well above their weight. I'd recommend everyone give them a follow because they really put up some funny stuff and it's yep. really relatable too. 
It's, yeah. it's a bold move, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about writing content that is, is engaging. I mean, the headline you see here is how to wash a horse blank. I mean, that would get me in. I don't have a horse, but I, I want to read that. <laughs> And the same with the one beforehand with Drifter, like the first line was like, trim the trailer up a bit. It was like, I just want me to read more. And that's really important. And you only see four lines or one and a half lines on the platform. Mm. Yeah. I've just followed both already. <laughs> Great. I've put <laughs> links well in the chat box as well to all of these examples. So jump on and give them a follow or have a look at more of their posts. Nice one. Um, LJ Hooker Harrington, again, consistent in their posting. Um, they've got a good mix of content in um, video and imagery, as well as that they're really selling the dream of living in Harrington, not just selling houses, but why people move there in the first place. Um, people, people are looking at the town first as opposed to houses, like they're not going to just search houses full stop and then find the best house for them. No, they want the location, but they're selling the location really well uh, by using really... Um, inspiring imagery uh, from Pilot Hill and um, we've shared some of their content too because they get out and take some really nice photos um, and again they're responsive um, they get a fair bit of um, engagement as well you can see there they've got 848 followers which is a fair bit for a real estate agent like um, and their efficient use of Facebook yeah. platforms so they post to Instagram and it directly posts to their Facebook page as well this is another really good example of telling a story. I mean, these guys are telling the story of Harrington um, rather than the LJ Hooker. So that's, that's the key thing for these guys. So they're doing really well. Mm. Um, Spice Monkey. So again, consistency, a great mix of content, um, video and images. Um, their content as well before coronavirus. So uh, it's, it was all the telling um, inspiring sort of content that, you know, in, in the summer months, there would be a, a beer on the table overlooking the lake with um, condensation on the outside and it made you want to drink that beer, you know, and go and sit in that table. Um, same goes for their food. Um, and then they were very adaptive come coronavirus time when they had to close. Um, they offered delivery service and they offered takeaway. They then went to straight away to using user-generated content. So photos that people uploaded of their takeaway at home, that's the photo I'm showing there. Um, and it was a great great way to show that they were still open for business and that you could still have this quality um, meal from them and, and wine as well. Um, and it was just great, great way to show how they adapted during that time, not only for their, for their business, but also their social media marketing. I thought it was really good. Um, and they have great use of user-generated content, even when they're open as well, because people love taking photos of their food. And, and they do some pretty good looking stuff as well. I'm gonna to have to duck off, so apologies guys. Okay. Um, sorry to interrupt, it's been awesome. Thanks guys. No worries, thanks Megan. Thanks, Bye. see you Megan. Um, and the last one, First National Foster Tongue Curry. Again, they're consistent, but they've also got a consistent style about them. They've decided on their style and they're sticking with it. Um, so you know what, you, what you're seeing. Um, it's, in a sense, it's like they've taken their window display um, that you see outside all real estates and they've moved it to social media in a sense with um, direct calls to action to that link back to their website um, and I just think it's a it's a little bit different to say the LJ Hooker example where they were selling the location these guys just have a really consistent style that they're sticking with um, and it's nice to look at too that's the prezzo um, like I said, it was quite hard to come up with this one just because it's such a broad topic. Um, but I'm hoping that you've got some takeaways from it, especially in that tips section on what you what you should do or what you should aim to do. Um, we, as the tourism team, we run various workshops for our tourism partners. Um, like we said, we tailor them pretty uh, specifically. So Michaela did some Facebook for beginners, which was, this is how you open the platform sort of thing right through to um, you know advertising on the platform so it was quite hard to condense it up into a little bit but i'm hoping that you guys were able to take something out of it um jade or kylie do you have any questions or was there anything that that we didn't um cover that you that you wanted covered no it was pretty good thank yeah. you and i've just started doing the um the free statement of attainment for digital marketing for business one of those ones um i just thought i'd just do that too so it's been really good to do this too that's yeah, nice. good information yeah um kylie 
if you can still hear us. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm all good, thanks. Okay, great. Look, afterwards, I'm going to send this deck through to everyone that was here. Um, if you do have any questions or if there's something that you weren't comfortable asking at the time or anything like that, please just send us through an email and um, we can either talk you through it over the phone or, or send back some screenshots or anything like that. So um, feel free to reach out. No worries. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Thanks, Holly. Bye. Bye. Bye.